Hey guys, Spiritual Whistleblower here. How you guys doing? I'm getting excited because guess what? My summer tour kicks off next, next week. It's about to be July, right? Yes. So I'm going to be in London, England, the UK, United Kingdom, London. I will see y'all on Sunday, July 10th, Paris, France, July 13th, Philly, Philadelphia. I'll be in Philly Saturday, July 23rd. Then I'll be in DC, Washington, DC, the 24th. I'll be in LA, Los Angeles, August 21st, which is on a Sunday. Labor Day weekend, I'm in the Shy Town, Chicago, and I'm in Detroit. Then for the first time, I'm in Toronto, Canada on September 24th, and then Houston, Texas, October 1st. Get your tickets at chanelljasmine at gmail.com. And I look forward to seeing you guys. London, England, I'll see you guys next, next week. Is it this? It's not this Sunday. It's the Sunday after, I believe. But London, England, I'm on my way. I'm excited. I'll be there a few days early, guys. So once I land in London, I'm going to make a huge announcement. Tickets are still available. People are starting to get their tickets. So I'll see you guys in. We're going to be in Shoreditch. Is that how you say it? Shoreditch? Yeah, I'll be, I love that area of London. Uh, anyway, so, okay, guys, let's get right into the topic of this video and um please thank y'all for sharing my videos spread them on facebook and everywhere else this video um i thought about it this morning about you know how the narcissist chooses uh his sexual partners and what is you know his strategy and i figured it all out and um you know i hope this video helps you with healing and to make you wake up and realize um there's no love you know, in this equation, when you're dealing with a narcissist, he doesn't love the next woman more than he loves you. And he doesn't love the last woman that came before you. He doesn't love anybody. He's a selfish motherfucker. Um, he's incredibly, incredibly deeply insecure. And this is why the, the his insecurities, um, are the motive behind him being manipulative in order to feed his ego. So, um, this video, I want to talk about quantity versus quality. What is more important to the narcissist, quantity or quality? <laughs> I'm such a deep thinker. I, re I really, you know, there's so many videos on narc abuse all over YouTube, and I really don't want to repeat or rehash something that someone else has already done. You know, I think you guys have, uh, know all the tactics, all the abuse you know, all the terminology. So I try to get people to look at things differently from a spiritual lens and, um, you know, pick apart the layers of narc abuse. And I think this video is definitely going to do that. So here we go. How does a narcissist view quantity over quality? Does a narcissist base his decisions on quality or quantity? Does he choose his sexual partners based on quality or quantity. Let me get y'all to think some here and let's have some dialogue in the comment section. You know, I love when we talk about this, we're a whole community. And even if people are too scared to type anything, they're still reading. So you just never know whatever advice you give in the comment section, you're definitely helping somebody that's reading and they're too afraid to speak up, but they're just reading you. The community are providing healing in the comment section. So let's go. Um, First off, my opinion, I think narcissists thrive off of quantity. They are more consumed with the amounts of sexual partners they have versus the quality. And there, there are several reasons why. Number one, ladies, a narcissistic man, we all know he was raised by two toxic parents. Let's just get that out the way. Uh, his mother, whether she's toxic codependent or she's a full blown narcissist, she is his number one enabler. She's the one that enables him to be abusive towards women. Now, whether she's a single mother or not, her Jezebel spirit, um, has such a powerful impact on her son. Um, you know, she transfers that feminine toxic energy onto her son and she, you know, this is where he learns. Uh, or this is where he gets all that feminine energy, that very toxic feminine energy. He gets it from his mama or the women that raised him. It could have been his grandmother. If his mother abandoned him and his grandmother raised him, he got it from his grandmother. If, if it's his sister, his mother's dead and uh, his sister raised him. His sister is the toxic Jezebel, the, the, the female narcissist. He was 
strongly, heavily influenced by a narcissistic woman in his upbringing. Let's get that out the way. Now, whether there's a man in the picture or not, dad could have been gone. A lot of these fathers like to abandon their responsibilities. There's no man in the house. Mom could have a string of different boyfriends. She could have multiple marriages because she's narcissistic and she jumps from man to man. Um, also too, she can be the more dominant one. If she's, if she chooses certain types of men that are weaker than her in terms of masculinity, mom will be the dominant one in the household and she will talk trash to the men in front of her son. She will also emasculate her son. I've seen women aggressively beat the crap out of their little boys. I've seen grown women call their little boys. You're a punk. You're a fucking sissy. Stop all that crying. It, as a grown woman talking to a little boy this way, you break his spirit and you take away his, 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 his potential to be a man. You're robbing him of his manhood and making him, you know, feel, you know, like a little girl. And this is where this behavior, this is where these men learn these behaviors in their childhood from their toxic mothers, whether daddy's in the picture or not. So, um, if there's a man in the picture, if he was raised around his father or stepfather, his daddy more than likely was abusive, verbally, emotionally withdrawn and physically. I hear so many stories of men who get beaten badly by their fathers and stepfathers. And, um, they may also get beaten by their mothers too. So they get a double dose, which builds up resentment in a little boy. And he's angry and he has no outlet to express his anger, which is why a lot of these young boys turn to the streets and they get that love that they, they they're craving love from mom and dad, but mom and dad are emotionally void because they're both narcissists. So he's going to seek that love from his homies in the streets and the streets, you know, is going to fuck him up too. And they end up in prison and they have all these emotional issues and stuff. And they're just, they just have, you know, skipped their therapy their entire lives. So again, if a young boy grows up with two toxic, abusive parents, and let's just say daddy's a serial cheater, what has daddy taught his son in his childhood? And if mom sticks around and she tolerates the cheating, what is she teaching her son? They're teaching the young boy. His father is teaching him that one woman is not enough to satisfy his sexual appetite. One woman is not enough. His mother who gave birth to him is less than, you know, the father just degrades her into the ground, mistreats her, physically abuses her verbally, you name it. And this young boy is watching his father degrade his mother in the household. And he's watching from his father that damn, in order to be a man, I have to have multiple women. I got to have a wife and I got to have multiple side chicks. His father's teaching him this behavior. And because his mother's a weak woman and she's tolerating and she's not leaving or divorcing his father, the young boy is going to think all women, all women uh, are supposed to be like his mother. So when he becomes a man, He's going to be more comfortable with a woman who behaves like a weak doormat, like his mother, a woman that tolerates cheating, a woman that has no self-respect morals, a woman, um, that's jealous of strong women who do have the ability to walk away from toxic men. His mother's that type of woman. He, he, he will seek those types of women throughout his entire relationship history. So ladies, this is where I'm going with this. He is not going to be satisfied with one quality woman. Now, when I say quality, I, I speak of high morals. I speak of empathy. I speak of your good job, your beautiful spirit, your giving, your generous, um, you're a, a woman of God. You know, you don't do people dirty behind closed doors. You're, you're a woman that, that really thrives off of having high standards and morals. You're a high quality woman. You take good care of your skin and your hair, you dress nice. All these things you were, you were wonderful. You were doing well in life before this narcissist came along and fucked your life up. Your credit was good. You know, you have money saved in the bank. He comes along. He's going to destroy all of that. He's going to sabotage all of that. Narcissists cannot deal with one quality woman. They cannot stay committed to one quality woman. They wasn't raised or taught to his mama's not a quality woman. 
Does he want to be seen with you? Yes, you make him look good. Everything about you is a bonus to his life because it's, it's it, to him, you're an extension of his ego. And like I said, he can go around his homeboys, his co-workers and family. Everyone, I want y'all to meet this beautiful woman. This is, this is my girl. This is my woman, my fiance. You make him look good. However, because of his upbringing, his home training, his piss poor morals, the fact that his daddy was not satisfied with having one wife, his daddy had to have multiple side chicks. He was trained and taught to overlook quality and to put value on quantity. Therefore, a narcissist is only happy when he's juggling multiple sexual partners. One wife is not going to be enough. One baby mama is not ever going to be enough. He needs constant attention and money from multiple people. Quantity is more important to a narcissist than quality. Now he has to get in a relationship. You ask, well, if that's the case, why did he want a committed relationship with me? Why not just marry the toxic baby mama? Why not just marry those trifling side chicks? Why, why mess up my life? I don't need a man. I'm doing well. Why would you come into my life and bring drama, chaos, and put me against the women in your family and get, you got me arguing with your baby mama and you got me fighting with your female coworker. I would, I didn't have this drama in my life before you came into my life. You are a fucking demon. You were sent by Satan because I live peacefully and you just destroyed my fucking peace. You destroyed my money. You're ungrateful. You're disloyal. You talked about me like a dog after I gave you the shirt off my back. Why narcissist? Why did you do this to me? The narcissist targeted you, the quality woman, because he has to use you as bait to allure and attract the quantity of weak women. If he wants to build a whore harem, and we all know what a whore harem is. A whore harem is a collection of low level women that don't respect themselves. It's his sexual partners. It's the female cousins that, you know, are enmeshed with him and they behave like they're his girlfriend. These are the female relatives. It's emotional incest. They have inappropriate relations with their relatives. They may not sleep together, but they damn near just about to sleep together. They're kissing cousins. Those women are in his whore harem. Uh, his mother behaves like his lover. She's obsessed and enmeshed with her son. She's a part of his whore harem. His toxic baby mothers that keep sleeping with him and helping him destroy his relationships, they're in his whore harem. So the whore harem is a collection of side chicks and toxic pick me ass bitches with low self-esteem that will help him abuse, cheat, lie, cover up the domestic violence. These are toxic Jezebel types of women. He loves collecting these women and these are his preference. He can juggle multiple of these women, whether he cusses them out, kicks them to the curb. He knows they're not going anywhere. He can put them on the shelf, take them off the shelf anytime he wants. That is his whore hair up. And that is his preference. Having multiple sexual partners and women fighting and causing drama feeds the ego. His preference is to have multiple quantity means more to him instead of being man enough to handle one quality, strong queen. He can't, ha he can't do it. He can't handle it. His mama isn't a strong queen. His mama's not a quality woman. So how can he identify with you? He can't, but he can use you to attract the toxic bitches because they're jealous and they want, they're going to want to compete and take your spot. He uses you to get all of them. Y'all have a blessed day. Spiritual whistleblower.